Hello everyone and welcome back to the podcast, Our Our Voice, Our Choice. Uh, I'm your, your host, Aaron. In this episode, we'll be covering the, the topic mental health from a from a bullying point of view. Uh, and the, the guest speaker I have with me today is Sean Altram. Uh, sorry, firstly, Sean, uh, thank you for agreeing to be a part of my podcast. I really appreciate it. Cool, cool. That's 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 good to hear. Tell us a bit about your, a bit about yourself, and and tactics training. Yeah, for sure. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, I've got tactics training. We're a, a disability focused gym predominantly, um, or it used to be predominantly. Now we're we're doing all sorts of different support services. Um, we've got support workers. We've got a healthy habit mentoring program. Um, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, we, we like to get into anything NDIS as long as it's got to do with health and fitness. Um, and personally, uh, I guess I, I was just talking about this before, but I guess I could say um, I'm a current player for the Newcastle North Stars ice hockey team. Um, I like hanging out with my dog, <laughs> going for walks, big car enthusiast. Um, and yeah, that's about it, mate, for that. Cool. Good old... Um because you and I have, Sean, have known each other um, a few years now, I think. Um, and yeah, your dog, good old Spuddy. Um, he's a bit of a buff head, but uh, um, just super quick. What what breed is Spuddy again? Um, he's an English Bull Terrier. English Bull Terrier. I can never remember the name of his breed. Yeah. My mum's just bought, um, just got a uh, a miniature Dachshund pup. Oh. And she's named him Frankie. Yeah, like and Frankfurt. He, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sausage uh, dog. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And his nicknames. He's already got a nickname. It's Sausage. Oh, awesome. Um, yeah, and he's uh, he's just just big. He's just he just gets into everything. Mm, yeah, pups. Uh, especially loves chewing the shit out of things. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, well, that's cool. Um, where did, where did you get the name tactics training from? Uh, that's a good question. Actually, I don't get asked that much. So um, when I was getting started trying to build the business, or even just you know thinking about the business and getting it off the ground, um, I was talking to my dad, um, who helps me out quite a lot with the business side of things, because um, I you know I was trying to figure out a name, and I, I liked impact coaching. I thought I was going to go with that, um, and then figured out the name had been taken in about a thousand different ways. Um, so, yeah, I don't know, Dad, Dad, we were talking about, you know, tactical something or other because at, at the time when I was building the business, it was still kind of mostly martial arts based um, for people with disabilities. So, um, tactical something was on and then Dad sort of just said, so, well, you know, what about tactics? Um, I was like, oh, tactics training, that's got a, a ring to it and just went with it. Now, here we are. Cool. I um. Oh, I remember when I first heard of tactics training. I think it was from um, 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 uh, yeah. Sorry, good old um Sarah Simmons. Um, I've known, I've I've known her for a fair while now, and I, I think you have too. Mm. Um, she said, "Oh, this fella Sean, he's got this, um, uh, yeah, like." The, the way I keep putting it, like disability specialty, you know, gym and, um, you know, he's a he's a personal trainer and he's also a, um, a, a mixed martial arts instructor. And I'm like, well, I've always wanted to learn MMA, but um, I've always been worried about being, you know, accepted, you know, welcome. But then when I heard of um take this train and i was like i think i've found a winner here and um i told i think i said i told sarah to 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 let you know i was interested in and shortly after that you sent me a message on i think it was a messenger maybe and ancient history as they say now Hmm. yeah we trained for quite a long time didn't we unfortunately the topic bullying it's a it's a pretty ugly one um I, f- I refer to it as a form of evil. Um, 
when I hear stories of bullying, it makes my blood boil. Um, but if you don't mind, Sean, tell us uh, about your experiences with um, with bullying. Yeah, for sure, mate. Um, I'm kind of the same way. You know, it's it's one of those things where it's yeah. If you hear about people being bullied, and it's um, usually you know it's it's a a pretty emotional sort of topic for a lot of people, but I definitely don't mind um, talking about it, um, especially if you can help other people in in that situation. So, um, I guess for me, it sort of occurred. What well, it occurred in high school. Um, so, kind of, you know, primary school it wasn't too big of an issue. It wasn't an issue at all. Sorry, um, but in high school, you know, we sort of got there and everyone's trying to figure it all out. Um, you know, year seven, you got kids from all sorts of different primary schools coming in and. Um, different groups and cliques being formed and stuff and you know I've always been a bit of a loner so um, I'm quite happy you know spending time I'm actually really happy spending time a lot of the time with my dog and just chilling out you know um, in my garage with the cars and just doing that sort of stuff I don't sort of have to be around people all the time and um, it's possibly because you know I don't um, when it came to sort of being friends with people in school um, kind of, I was kind of always the odd one out. I was a small kid, um, so I was a pretty easy target. I was really, really nice. Um, I was cheeky, especially with my teachers, but you know, I wouldn't hurt a fly. It, you know, didn't have a bad bone in my body. Um, and unfortunately, um, you know, it's just the way the world is. People will see that sometimes, and um, you know, prey upon those sort of people. So, I guess it, it, for me, it started. Um, you know, just with little stuff like, you know, uh, kids sort of giving you a bit of a shove or that sort of stuff. Um, you know, I got a, uh, a towel assaulted a couple of times at school by, you know, one or two kids. A um, couple of couple of incidents, probably the worst ones um, happened at, at house parties when I was in high school. Um, yeah, so not, not real nice, but it's sort of, you know, it, it is what it is and I, I do... I, I lean on my experiences to try and help people now, which, um, you know, I'm fortunate enough to be in the position to do. Um, yeah. Yeah. Th- thanks for sharing that, um, Sean. I, um, I just quick, my, um, my experiences of bullying were, uh, I'll, I'll put it in the way of mild. I, is, I guess is the best way for me to put it, but I, as soon as it kind of, well, as soon as it started, I, I just, uh, I just dealt with it. I just went straight to school. I was at a pretty good school, and it helped because I was well liked by a lot of the teachers. Um, I wasn't a teacher's pet, <laughs> but I was well liked because uh, when it came to school work, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't was. I wasn't a bright spark, but I always gave it a red hot crack. Um, yeah, and I just went straight to the school, and they dealt with it, and that's pretty much where it ended. Uh, the kid that was doing it to me, he was doing it to others, and they, he ended up getting um, uh, expelled because I didn't see him ever again. Hmm. Um. But um, how did – so, sorry, my next question mm. would have been, like, how bad did the bullying get? But I think you've kind of already – Oh, yeah, look, I can address that a bit a bit further. You know, like, it's um, – I mean, in, in school, it's kind of, kind of different, right? Like, in high school, not all the kids have got adult strength yet. So, you know, what I mean by that is, like, in year seven, you know, year seven or year eight, I got uh, kind of – attacked by a couple of kids in the the bathroom after a PE class and look it was a pretty a pretty bad experience you know I won't say it wasn't it wasn't uh it wasn't a huge deal but it was big enough that it was pretty scary pretty traumatic but you know the kids were young enough that they didn't really do any damage it's just they jumped on me and just sort of windmilled me through a bunch of kicks and punches and I just sort of covered up so you know that that wasn't a bad one. The, probably the worst ones, like I said, were the house parties I went to. One in, one in particular, you know, a bunch of kids from a gang, a local gang, um, jumped me. They might have, you know, apparently from people that saw it, there was like ten to fifteen blokes that sort of jumped on me and punches and kicks and all the rest. But they were quite 
you know, they were some uh, a bit stronger dudes. So I ended up with a couple of black eyes and, you know, bruises and lumps and bumps everywhere. So that was that was probably the worst. I, got, I was pretty lucky not to get hurt on that one. Um, but, yeah, I mean, others, others aren't so fortunate, you know. So I guess I got away with it not too badly in that case. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing and... Um, yeah, me, uh, the blood's, you know, starting to boil, so, <laughs> yeah. um, like, h- how did you, like, how did you deal with the bullying, like, how did you, how did it stop, or how did you get it to stop? Um, mate, honestly, it didn't really, you know, it kind of stopped when I left high school, you know what I mean, like, <clears throat> I didn't deal with it the way I direct or, you know, uh, advise people to deal with it. Um, you know, like after I left school, school, like I tell kids, schools are, you know, it's over in the blink of an eye. You kind of, I feel for high school kids because you're kind of trapped in this bubble and, you know, the whole, all the social stuff going on in this bubble and you can't get away from people, you know, like teach teachers and and stuff like that they they do their best but a lot of the time when they tell kids you know who are getting bullied i just stay away from them and it's you know it's impossible the the gate i mean especially now it wasn't the case back when i was a kid but you know the most schools have got six foot high fences that are locked all day you're not you're not getting away from anyone at the school um so uh i guess how how did i deal with it yeah like it sort of finished after school um yeah, there wasn't too much to do. Like I, yeah, try and tried to stay away from the kids. Um, yeah, it's just it was a rough one. I wasn't I wasn't trained at that time. Um, yeah, do, do you want me to explain like how I recommend people get get away from it now or how they deal with it? Um, yeah, uh, that's that's oh, my oh, ne- that's my next question. Oh, is is oh, that, um, Not the, yeah. oh good. Um, so, like, what tips like, or advice, like, do you have uh, for someone who's currently being bullied? Yeah. Sorry, mate. I kind of um, snipped your question then. Um, no, you're right. Yeah, look, I, I recommend every, the, probably the biggest thing that's made an impact in my life um, is getting into martial arts. And, you know, there's some, some are better than others. Um, if anyone ever wants to ask me, you know, uh, what they recommend – Sorry, what do I recommend they get into to, you know, get the best bang for their buck, you know, because there's only time's limited, money's limited. Um, but look, honestly, any any martial art is better than nothing and it's, and it's not usually the ability to fight, which is important. It's the confidence that you gain from having the ability to fight. So if you've got confidence, like I, I, I wasn't a confident kid at all, you know, I was like not anxious or anything, but I just didn't, yeah, I just didn't have the any... Oh, just 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 wasn't confident. So self esteem was low. Um, you know, once I sort of trained for a long time, I was doing mixed martial arts for a long time, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, and you know, ended up doing like security and all sorts of stuff. Like once once you're confident, people can kind of feel that, um, and a lot of the time you'll avoid you know any confrontations from bullies and that sort of thing. Like they they can feel it. Like they they want people that are scared they don't want the guy that's going to stand up for themselves and look them straight in the eye and go no um that's you know yeah i think everyone should should get into it um especially i mean okay so yeah uh, as i was saying every, i think everyone should get into some form of training um you know as i was saying the, the confidence is the biggest thing um but yeah i mean the ability to defend yourself is very important you know so when we've got kids um, in school or wherever that are getting um, getting bullied, you know, I will advise them um, that at, at some point enough's got to be enough, and um, they kind of need to pull the trigger on their training. So it's it kind of it sounds pretty ruthless, I know, to some people, but uh, at some point, um, if their bully puts another finger on them, they've got to. Um, really really go for it and um defend themselves and that with you know depending on what sort of training you're doing that could be if you're into striking that could be punching them as hard as they can in the nose and then not stopping until someone pulls them off or um you know if you're a grappler or whatever um 
wrestling that person on the ground, sitting on top of them and basically subduing them. Um, and that's that's always preferable. I feel that's why I, I instruct, or I advise people to get into Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or freestyle wrestling because you know if you're half decent at that, then you can quite easily take a person to the ground that's not trained um, and you know, rather than hurt the person, you, you will humiliate them in front of their peers. Okay, so if it's at school, um, you know, I'm assuming school's the same as it was when I was a kid. If there's a if there's a fight, everyone runs in, everyone sees it, the teachers are going to break it up, um, you know, and if you humiliate your bully in front of the whole school, um, they're not coming back. And then everyone, everyone kind of knows that the person that's defended themselves isn't to be messed with. But that, I mean, in saying that, I should I should uh, say you know in bold basically like that's kind of the last straw um, you know you should always try and um, get out of these situations without getting anyone being hurt or having to attack someone but like I said sometimes they don't let you sort of do that so yeah yeah cool um, that's awesome Sean I um like we're dealing with bullies, I, you know, my, um, I I'm someone that wouldn't be getting given people tips because I I wouldn't know, uh, I, I, enough about it. But I do know that, um, standing up to a bully, um, can go a long, long way to to stopping the bully. And I I know a story of. Of someone that that was being bullied, and they'd only just they were they started training, but they were they were self taught, mm-hmm. um, and even then, still, the you know, I I could tell the difference in confidence, and they 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 walked straight up to this bully and got right in his face, mm-hmm. and the you know the the coward did nothing just. Mm. You know, tried to act tough by you know like smiling at him and that, and you know doing the whole, yeah, you know the head, you know wobble or banging thing, and and then just walked off, and um, that was the end of for him. And um, when I heard about it, I was um, you know I was you know happy as Larry's, I was over the moon for him, mm. um, because if you don't put a stop the bullying there can be fatal consequences and um like and i'd hate to say this but things like committing suicide mm. so yeah mate 100 percent. the mental health side of things is probably the biggest you know for, for me um i'm grateful uh, that i've sort of i've been able to turn it into a good thing um i think i came out the other end of that um having more compassion for people and you know kind of um i try and champion the little guy a lot of the time you know um you know people that are vulnerable and and all that sort of stuff you know yeah it's it's quite a a big passion of mine um the other thing i should say i just thought of as well is like you know most of the time when i talk to bullying sorry talk to people about bullying it's in regards to um school stuff like school kids um, that's not to say it doesn't happen as an adult, but it's, it is a different kettle of fish. Um, you know, if someone, I mean, if someone's bullying you in the workplace or your friend group, it is very different. Um, you know, like I sort of alluded to before in in school, you know, there's only so much damage kids can do to each other. Um, outside, outside of that, you know, full grown adults, like, you know, um, like Aaron, you're a, you're a big fella. You can you could do some damage. You know what I mean? You're not a school kid anymore. I'm sure we're, actually in school probably you could do some damage. You would have been a big fella anyway. But generally, kids are kids. But you know, adults, it's it's much different. So in your workplace, obviously, you can't just you can't do like what I said before. Inverted commas, pull the trigger on your training. Um, but the positive thing about being outside of school and in the workplace or friend group is you've got choices. So you know. Um, I would recommend if, if you're getting bullied in the workplace, which does happen quite a lot, um, l- like a lot, um, you know, I would recommend to those people talking to your supervisor or your boss, you know, making sure they know what's going on. Um, if they do nothing, there are other avenues you can pursue if you really, really love the job and love where you're at. 
Um, but the other thing is too, if you tell your boss and they do nothing and you go through the avenues and nothing's done, then it's not, you know, that place isn't the right place for you. They're not looking after you. Um, it might be time to look for somewhere where, which will look after you and it's a bit more of a positive environment. Um, same with your friend group. Like I've had a bunch of dudes um, that I've trained and know that got bullied within their friend group. You know, they, they might you know, at the time um, when I actually, this is when I first started training them and then they sort of sorted it out. Not once again, not by through their training, but just, you know, being more confident. Um, you know, people get bullied in friends, friend groups, but like if your friends are bullying you, then it might be time to just sort of have a, have a think about whether they're actually your friends. Um, you know, because that's just not what you do to your mates. You know, you're supposed to help your mates and pick them up when they're down, not not put them down, if you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, I mean, the other thing too, like if anyone's ever got a, a question about this sort of stuff, I, you know, as I said, it's a, it's a passion of mine. I like helping people. So if you do want some specific answers or, or specific advice or just someone to talk to you about what's happening in your life in regards to bullying, that sort of stuff, feel free to get in contact. Um yeah, just through what the usual means, tactics, training, Facebook and, you know, all that sort of stuff, private messages. Um, I'd be more than willing to talk to anyone about that stuff. Cool. And I I think um, uh, I think um, people would great, um, greatly appreciate that. Um, I know when I trained with you, I, know I wasn't bullied or anything, but I didn't have, like, sorry, this is different, but I I didn't have um, um, yeah, much, uh, much confidence at all. I was, um, you know, I could, you know, people do, you know, you can blame the disability, but, um, you know, I was. Um, and unfortunately, still am. But um, I'm overweight, unfit, and um, and I was worried if I was going to be any good at it. Yeah, I just have to say the, those kind of worries were, you know, were pretty quickly put to bed. You know, I realised I had a fair bit of like punching and striking power and that. And not that I was learning mixed martial arts to go and start but go around belting people, but um, I knew if I um, you know, you know, one or t- one or one or two hits or whacks, and I'd probably be able to get away, and because that's what, from what I know, self defense is. Um, you know, you don't you you do enough to cause, you know, enough pain and discomfort to to get away and go and tell someone. Um, you know, you don't just once you um you break free of them you don't just lay into them and then because then then you could end up being a charge mm. with assault <clears throat> and that and mm. but um yeah is there like anything else you'd like to yeah. like add yeah i mean just you just brought it up then um and that's the other thing with you know um defending yourself is unfortunately um you can get in trouble if you uh, defend yourself in the wrong way. Um, you know, we go over the top, say you let your emotions get the best of you and you do beat beat someone in a, you know, in a fight or whatever that, that you've sort of not started but you've chosen to engage in. Um, yeah, you just, you've still got to always watch yourself and make sure, like that's, you know, the, the whole coward punch thing, um, that people do and and all that stuff it's generally the, the cowardly people that are untrained that do that um if you if you are trained you need to be um you need to act like you're trained basically you can't yeah you definitely need to watch yourself you don't want to have to go to court and defend yourself um in court because you've stuck up for yourself you still need to watch yourself um that's why i say that you know the violent violence is the last course of action it, it is an option um but it's to be the last thing that you do to sort of um yeah defend yourself yeah uh absolutely um i was just wondering sean if you could like share like a i'm gonna call it a feel-good story that you know that's come from one of your maybe current or past clients of tactics mm-hmm 
Um, in regards to bullying or, or um, yeah, if you if you if you can think of one or just just any kind of um, feel good story because it just hmm. yeah okay um, yeah look I, I, as I was saying before I kind of alluded to the the a few adults that I've trained who were having problems in their friend groups and stuff um, I, I won't mention any names but there was um one guy in particular who came in um when this is when i was training people one-on-one i don't do that unfortunately anymore i'm more of a desk jockey now but um you know this this fella he was a pretty tall dude um you know he's like six two really nice guy like didn't have a bad bone in his body but was kind of getting taken advantage of um by his friends you know they'd kind of it's, it sounds weird, but, you know, they go out and he, they'd make him shout beers a lot of the time and they'd sort of put him down and if he was talking to girls, they'd come up and, and sort of, um, you know, block block him out. Um, yeah, just, just not really nice to him and really using him up. And sort of, you know, as he got some he got some confidence with the training, he joined the gym, he joined Alpha actually where, where I was coaching out of, he was doing one-on-ones with me, going to Alpha, and really got stuck into that training. Um, and he just, he didn't ever attack any of his mates or sorry, you know, they didn't attack him or anything like that. He just sort of got confident enough that he didn't need to be around them anymore. You know, he was like, oh, he just sort of figured it out one day. He's like, oh, you guys are a bunch of dicks. Um, like, I'm not, I'm not, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> not super nice blokes. Um, he figured that out. So he, and then he was sort of out of there, you know, but, um, yeah, he, he found new friends, a bunch of dudes that, that, that actually enjoyed his like his company and and for and enjoyed him for who he was. Um, but, you know, we, we get a lot of wins with that sort of stuff. You know, a lot of kids um, in particular, you know, I, I really feel great when a kid is has been bullied and they kind of, they stick up for themselves, you know. Um, one, I'm just trying to think of a couple of examples. Like, you know, there's one guy, one young kid, he was only about, 11 or 12 um he was bullied for a long time same as so kind of same situation as me I was a kid he was really nice kind of little um got to the point where he had to defend himself and he put one on the chin of um you know one of his bullies and um you know there was multiple and then they funnily enough they never never uh, harassed him again because they he sort of stuck up for himself and he showed that he's capable and um you know his parents were stoked and then yeah, we we get that quite a bit. It's um, you know, it's no accident when that when that happens. You know what I mean? So yeah. Um. Yeah. That's that's um. You know, as uh, I'm gonna say the word as they say again, but um, as they say that uh, you know, music to my ears. Mm. It's love hearing that. Yeah. Um, that probably makes probably makes you feel super good. Mm, big time. Um. Uh, sorry, I'm not. I'm just thinking. Um. Um. Sorry, everyone. Um. I guess we can. We'll move on to our final question, which is um. It's um. As I've done with all the all the all the other episodes, um, it was a fun, um, light-hearted checkout question, and uh, my checkout question for you, Sean, is is because I know you're a car man, and I am myself. Um, um, oh, well, many many people are car car fans. It's always good to to run into them because you've got something to talk about, but. The question is, like, what is your favourite Australian built car? Um, so that's a that's a hard one, actually. I had to think about that. I, I'm a big time Japanese car fan, as you know. But um, I know Mister Mister Skyline GTR man. Yeah, love my love my GTR. Um, no, I, I think for me the my favourite Australian manufactured car would be the Holden Malu Ute. Um, oh. Yeah, because I mean, I, I I do love a Ute, but the Malu for me in particular because it's you know a big V eight, big loud thing, pretty obnoxious. 
Um, actually, I think that's what I like about the most is it's pretty. It's a pretty obnoxious car. They they're pretty useless. Like they're just, you know, they're <laughs> they're like, you know, they're they're a utility or they're supposed to be with a big old body kit. No one's going to use them as as a work truck or anything like that. But Holden was just like, you know what, bugger it, we're going to make this super cool, um, dumb, useless, fast Ute that doesn't handle that well, and and people buy them. You know, they well they buy them. So I'd love one. <laughs> Big, I just think this it's awesome that they made such a useless car just for fun. Um, yeah. Um. Yeah. That. Um. Yeah, I I do I I do, I do like an Aussie like uh an Aussie an Aussie Ute. I mean, I you know whether it's a um it's a Commodore, you know, Commodore Ute or it's a HSV Ute like the Malloy, they just they just look cool and mean and mm. you know kind of like, you know get out of my way kind mm. of attitude to them. That's why I like 4 by 4 Utes. they got that, you know, I can go anywhere, you know, get out of my way mm. attitude. But my favourite Australian-built car is actually... Uh, it's actually a Mitsubishi. Oh. But it was built, I'm pretty sure, in Australia, and that's the uh, Mitsubishi Magna Rally Art. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Um, they were... At the time, compared to the the like the O one O two Commodore SS and the uh, I think the Ford Falcon XR rate, they accelerated quicker than both of them. They're right. Okay. Very cool. Um, and they even entered them in um oh what um. Ah, uh, was it like the Australian GT Championship, which I I, I, I could be wrong, but um, I don't think it exists anymore. But for 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 motorsport, they 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 took out the three point five liter V six and decided to stuck a stick a V eight in it. Hmm, very cool. Um, but yeah, and it was just. Yeah, Magnus, you know, they've always been known as being super reliable and, you know, they don't look, you know, mean or 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 that, but, you know, they're reliable, they're fast. Mm. Um, I think, to me, they were f- reasonably cheap to, to repair. So, yeah, that's mine. Yeah, yeah mate, pretty good vehicle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was I was gonna say to be honest the um like the la the 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 first and last of the HSV GTSRs. Mm, okay, like the new the new look one, like new shape. Yeah, yeah, and then the <coughs> the first one, which I think came oh. out in I think it was ninety six. But um, I don't know because you're a I know you like your manuals, mm. um, but they only came with a six-speed auto, mm. so I don't know if that would be up your up your alley. Oh, maybe as a cruiser, mate. But I do, I do like the old the yellow GTSR they had. That was cool. Yeah. Was neat. Uh, yeah. Well, I was I was going to say that, but mm. no, I went with the Magna Rally R. Yep. To the left turn. <laughs> <laughs> um. Awesome, awesome. Um, thank you very much, Sean, for that. Um, again, I um, a huge thank you for agreeing to become for agreeing to be on my uh, as a as a green to be a guest speaker on my podcast. Um, it's been fun. Um, thoroughly enjoyed the chat, not interview chat. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, thank you very much. Very welcome, mate. Thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah, and to my audience, I greatly appreciate you all. And again, I hope you find this this episode uh, very very helpful. Um, see us, see us for the next one. Hopefully, thanks. Bye. <laughs>